Hello everyone, Jose Rodriguez here and welcome to the very first paper testing against non-OEM inks. We're going to be looking at Red River's Pecos River Gloss. This is a really great paper. I happen to have a box of this. It is a very nice thick paper with a gorgeous cast coated gloss coat. Again, suitable for many things, but mainly suitable for those of you who perform a lot of cart design, note cards, greeting cards, that sort of thing. On their side, for this particular type of paper, there is a data sheet that you can actually pull up, look at the specs, It'll tell you all about the coding. Basically, it's designed for photo and design printing, greeting cards, note cards, postcards, projects where you need a high gloss with a printable back, so you can actually print in the back. So if you're creating note cards, why not get yourself a barcode creator? And if you have a barcode reader, then you can read that barcode and insert the data in your computer so that you can keep track of purchases that people make of your particular products. It comes in 4x6, 5x7, letter size 8.5 by 11, 11 by 17, and 13 by 19. I think for most people who will be just doing note cards will stay with the smaller sizes. Well, they also have it, I believe, available. I need to go look at my stock and see if I have some of that. The pre-scored note card paper. Again, you just use a template, you load your images onto the template, you print them, and then you just basically fold them following that pre-scored mark. You can also get yourself a list of all of the different types of papers that are available currently. And I will be testing quite a few of these. Let's go ahead and begin. First thing we want to know, of course we know these papers will perform very well with original inks, whether they're for Canon or from Epson. But how do they perform for us stingy home photo printers who like to use good third-party inks? All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here. This is the original one that I did when I was running OEM inks on my Pro 100, basically with the OEM profile. This is done through Photoshop, turning off color matching in the driver and letting Photoshop control color. Black point compensation on and relative colorimetric on the rendering intent. And here, let's take a look. The next one down is precision colors inks on the Pro 100, letting the driver control color, basically using just the simple paper choice, which is glossy too. Then the next one is using precision colors custom profile for Pecos River paper and their own ink set. I think you can see a slight difference in the color temperature here. This is a little bit warmer and this is more of a closer match to all OEM. Now, now I will not be able to create a profile because I do not have letter size paper, but I should be able to match that simply with a custom profile. So the basic performance of the Precision Colors ink set, the dye ink set for the Pro 100, and this paper using Precision Colors own ICC profile seems to be quite good. Seems to be quite good. I don't see any super great discrepancy, something that I would have to complain about. Again, I'm looking at the shadow areas of the faces, and that is a critical point when you're comparing types of inks and papers. Look at this really, really carefully, okay? I used to see on some really bad combinations a bluish shadow on the face. And that means that you don't have a nice linearly neutral ramp from your darkest to the lightest tones. Look at your darkest black. Look at the next one up. Make sure that you can see the difference between the two. The same thing with the whites. I can see the difference. If you really wanna get tricky, Go to your 254 and see if you can see the 253, and I can. 
But can I see it with the Precision Colors inks? Yes, I can. So there you go. The results are, are, are great. I like what I'm getting here. I wish I had some larger version of that particular paper because I really have some good use for that. Although I'm not a huge fan of glossy, but in this case, it hit it out of the ballpark. And that combination, which is saving you about 15 times what it would cost to print on original inks. There you go. So how does it perform with just regular images? So I have this nice, bright sunset, very dramatic sunset. I shot that in Gettysburg, and you can see the colors. This looks correct to me. This looks correct. This looks like I don't really want to do anything else to that image. What about a face just covered with all sorts of very saturated, colorful makeup? But look at her skin tones. Now, video is not the best source for you to be examining prints with because these cameras do not have such an accurate sensor. So you will get variations in color rendition. But to me, sitting right here next to this, she looks perfectly correct. What about a monochrome image? Again, this looks neutral. So I don't have a thing to complain about when it comes to this image and this combination. So that was the goal here. We want to test not just Red River, but other papers as well. There's a ton of Red River papers that I need to cover. But we'll be doing this in a series. So the Red River will be kept in one playlist. Other brands will be kept in different separate playlists. And that should be very informative for those of you who just wondering whether this paper works well with this printer and oh yeah i forgot to tell you i'm using third-party inks so we'll be able to cover quite a few combinations in the next few months this is going to take a while folks but anyway that is it i'm done with this at least i did not want to drag it for too long because of the enormity of different papers that we are about to test so does it work with Precision Colors Inkster for the Pro 100 using Precision Colors ICC profiles? Absolutely. So please consider trying this paper, especially those of you who do note card printing. It works really, really well for that application. What are we going to be doing next? Well, I'm going to attempt to use it on the Pro 10 with Precision Color Signature Edition plus OEM Ren. The only problem is... I don't have a single ICC profile that I can use. Precision Colors has not created an ICC profile for this particular paper yet. And again, I cannot create an ICC profile for it simply because of the size of the paper that I have on hand. I would have to have larger papers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the printer handle color pick whatever the recommendation is for that printer. I think it should be the same and see what we get. Okay. And maybe at the very least I can do the ICC profile from Red River or Precision Colors earlier ICC profile before they created the Signature Edition ink set. I don't know how that's going to work out, but if we can get relatively good performance, meaning that because it's a, remember, it's a pigment ink set using Chroma Optimizer to at least make it a little bit glossy. It doesn't play so well with a printer that uses dye ink. Okay, You always have that little bit of a a, a lowering of the gloss of the paper when you jump over to pigment even if you use OEM it happens so this paper although they say that it can work with both pigment and dye inks I prefer the look that you get from a good dye ink printer and so I would dedicate this paper for printers such as the Epson 1430 if you have an older Canon 9000 Mark II that'll work perfectly with it and of course, the currently available Pro 100. And remember, you are saving about 1 15th of the cost of printing when you're using a third party ink. And this is what this is all about. We're going to be testing all these papers, how they perform with not OEM, but third party inks. So that is going to be the goal of this whole study. So thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And as always, happy printing, everybody. Oh, yeah. Eat sleep, print, and repeat. So long, everyone. Bye-bye.